Hey guys, what's up? Dr. W here, and welcome to part 2 of my Eminem album rankings. If you haven't seen part 1, I'm going to put a link to it up in the right corner. So you can check that out before you see this part. And I just want to remind you to like, share, subscribe, and comment for more of my content. And now let's just get a recap of the first part. So we did albums 10, 9, and 8. 10 was Revival with a score of 47. 9 was Encore with a score of 79, and 8 was Marshmallow's LPs 2 with a score of 80. If you don't know, I'm making Eminem's 10 solo albums from Slim Shady LP onwards. And how I'm doing it is I'm taking all the songs minus the skits and um, interludes and stuff, and I'm giving them a score of 0, 1, or 2. 0 meaning they're not on my Eminem playlist. One meaning they're on my Eminem playlist, but I would probably skip them half the time. And two meaning I listen to them more often than not when they come up on the playlist. And then I'm just like getting an average of those and getting a percentile score and all that. Okay, so today we're going to do 7, 6, and 5. And in 7th place is one that sho shocked me because I thought this was uh, one of my more liked Eminem albums. But you know, when I was just doing this, it turned out it was down here at number 7. Not making it a bad album. I think the only bad Eminem album is Revival. Uh, the rest of them are at least good. And uh, probably four of them I'd say are great. But this is number seven. And number seven is Relapse. Came out in 2009. And I am doing the Relapse Refilled Edition. Because that's just what we're doing. We're doing the most extended edition of every album. That's what we're reviewing. So without further ado, the first song on Relapse, 3AM. One of Eminem's best songs one of my favorite Eminem songs I gave it a two obviously I listen to this song every time it comes on I probably never skip this song it's great it's some of Eminem's best wordplay which I think is a reflection of revival revival's Eminem at his best wordplay wise he's not fast rapping you know he's doing he's technically at his best here though his accents are probably what drives it down and some of the material he's rapping about drives it down but overall it's solid so next song is My Mom. This one is on the fence. I gave it a 2 as well. Uh, it's between a 2 and a 1. But I think I do listen to it more often than not. Um, the content is a little zany. But maybe that's what you know, Eminem is. He raps about zany shit. So My Mom gets a 2 as well. Next up is Insane. Insane I gave a 1 to. I probably listen to it. A third of the time it comes on, maybe. Maybe a little less. It's on the playlist. But this is one I was talking about where the content he's rapping about drives the song down. This song is just... It's too out there for me to give it, you know, the highest marks. But I listen to it every now and then. The next song on the list is Bagpipes from Baghdad. Another great Eminem song. Though I think the last verse gets a little out there. Um, I still gave it a two. Because it's catchy. I like the chorus, you know. He's shitting on Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. You know, it's classic EM. Especially when you take in consideration that The Warning is kind of like a sequel to this song. So that's cool. Uh, next up is Hello. This song, I think, is lackluster lyrically. Like, actual words he's saying. He's still a great rapper on this song. Obviously. Uh, but just what he's rapping about is a little, you know... It's not quite there for me, so I gave it a 1. Next song is Same Song and Dance. I really like this song. I think it's catchy. Uh, it's zany. You know, he's not... Like almost all the songs on this album, he's not rapping about anything really. You know, he's talking about killing Lindsay Lohan and uh, Britney Spears on this song. But he does it catchy, you know, and there's some cool, you know, funny lines he says and stuff like that. So I gave it a 2. Next is Remade You, which is like, I guess, the... Slim, like my name is, or real Slim Shady of this album. Uh, it's not as good as either of those songs, but it's funny and catchy, especially if you're someone who was around and knew about the pop culture of 2008, 2009. Uh, it's more of a song for that moment, I think, where in, uh, my uh, my name is in real Slim Shady are great songs that you really don't have to know about that era from. We Made You Suffers because it is a song of that moment, but it's still fun enough to get a two. The next song is Medicine Ball. I gave it a 1. It's another one of those songs like uh, Insane or Hello where he's not really rapping about anything. He's rapping well. And, uh, you know, it's catchy to listen to sometimes, but it's not one of his best songs. 
Next is next song is Stay Wide Awake. This I think is probably maybe Eminem's best lyrical song. Some of the verses on here are just insanely well written and just, you know, flow so smoothly. He's rapping about just, you know, murdering people again, which is the theme of this album. But he's doing it so at such a high level on Stay Wide Awake that it's a pleasure to listen to. So I gave it a two. Next up is Old Time's Sake. Which gets a two, and may, mostly because it's just a song with Dr. Dre and Eminem on it. Uh, I think Relapse is the last Eminem album that has a Dr. Dre feature. I'm pretty sure that's right. And Old Time Sake is one of those. You know, it's fun. Got this like, it's not it's not talking about the same stuff Guilty Conscience is, but it has like this Guilty Conscience vibe. So I gave it a two. Uh, next songs must be the Ganja. I gave it a one. I feel like it's another one of those songs where the content of the song drags it down a little bit. Um, next up is Deja Vu. I really like this song. It's a more sentimental storytelling imp song. It has kind of like a recovery feel to it a little bit. Um, I gave it a two. I listen to it most of the times it comes on. It's heartfelt. I don't like those songs from him. Uh, speaking of heartfelt, next is Beautiful. I think this is the only song Eminem wrote while still in rehab on this album the rest of them were afterwards and although the third verse i think is a little shaky on beautiful the first two are so great and it's a inspirational moving song and i really enjoy that next is crack a bottle with 50 cent and dr dre i like this song it's a nice you know dance hall clubby type feel you know you know, dance to it uh i like the mtv i think it's the mtv music awards moment where they bleep out rapes murders and the word slim shady at the beginning which is funny and it's a fun song let's do so i gave it a two next up is underground i almost gave this a zero to be honest with you i think the content of this rap is very poor eminem's flow and style on the rap is obviously great but just the content of it is very poor and i gave it a one because i might listen to it every now and then and it is on the playlist but it's one of the worst songs on this album i think Next up, and I believe this is where we're getting into uh, refill material, is Forever. Obviously, gets a two. It's got Drake, Kanye, Lil Wayne, and Eminem. And I think it's, sh like, it's Eminem showing that he's still better than all of them, lyrically. And that's when Kanye was at his best. Uh, and probably Lil Wayne, too. Drake might have gotten a little bit out of that song, but then fell off. But Eminem's coming back, and, like, he gives a performance that's, I don't know, it, it shows that he's, you know, still the greatest rapper. Next up is Hell Breaks Loose. Uh, much like Old Time's Sake, this has a feature from Dr. Dre on it. Uh, it's catchy, and I think the Dr. Dre team up with Em on a verse rapping together pushes it over the edge to give it that too as well. Another song that has no real content but has some catchy raps is buffalo bill i gave it a one i feel like you know like i said this is just creatively he's just rapping about buffalo bill but making it sound catchy next up is god what the fuck did i even write elevator that's the next song uh, i really like this one got a catchy hook a meaningful story a little bit uh eminem's rapping you know great here and it, it's one of on the album that I've revisited a lot. The next song is Taking My Ball. Taking My Ball is catchy. He's not rapping about anything, really. And I feel like that's like half the album. He's not really rapping about much. So I gave it a one. Next up is Music Box. Uh, not as close to getting a zero as Underground was. But I could see someone giving Music Box a zero on this rating scale. It's on my playlist, though. So I gave it a one. And it's... I don't know, there's something strange about it that I can't really put my finger on that I don't really enjoy. The way, like, his rapping skill, obviously, great. What he's rapping about, not great. And also, I don't know if, like, it's the beat or something that I found just off-putting a little bit. But maybe that's the intention because of what the song's about. I don't know. I gave it a one. Next is Drop the Bomb. Um, Eminem's accent that he puts on is really horrible <laughs> in Drop the Bomb, I think. And the whole uh, boy skit, not like skit, but like, you know, the whole flow and segment where he's just, you know, 
rhyming boy I found a bit lazy and off-putting. So I gave it a one. Next up is My Darling. I think it's creative. Uh, he's rapping about something here. And he's rapping well, so I gave it a two. And the final song on the album is Careful What You Wish For. I also find it um, meaningful and he's rapping about something. And it's like a, t like, it's a perfect way to cap off this album. You know, he's telling about you know, what he went through up till this album. And I really enjoyed that. So when we tally everything up, there's 48 possible points. And Relapse got 39 of them, giving it an 81. Which puts it at 7th place on the list of feminine albums. Next up at 6th place, probably the one I'm going to get the most shit for, uh, is the Slim Shady LP. I'm going to get a lot of shit for this one, I can feel it. But, uh, hear me out. It's sixth, right? Obviously, I think we can all agree that the four albums below it are worse than it. And I feel like some of it is still Eminem feeling out who he's going to be as Slim Shady in the spotlight. You know, some of the songs are a little weird and not quite what we expect from Eminem yet. So let's get on into it. The first song on the album, My Name Is, one of Eminem's best songs still to this day, probably top five, maybe top ten Eminem best songs. Uh, definitely gets a two. It's always, you know, you gotta listen to it every time it comes on. It's catchy. That's about all I can say about it. Everybody knows my name is. Next up, Guilty Conscience. I really love this. I love the Eminem, Dr. Dre connection they have. The story they're telling, I like, you know, it's interesting what they're rapping about. I find it uh, catchy to listen to. I think it's, you know, abrasive, which is something I like in Eminem content. So I gave it a 2 as well. Next song is Brain Damage. I think this is another classic Slim Shady song. I like listening to it. I gave it a 2. You know, he's rapping about his life, but like cleverly, and that's something that he started with. Wow, as you're going to see on some of the other songs on this, he's not quite there. But on Brain Damage, he's definitely at its peak, uh, at least in this first era. Next up is If I Had. I think If I Had's a little slow. It might be like, because this album, you know, is what, 22, 21 years old now. It's a slow rap song, contemplative. It's not as catchy. Uh, I listen to it every now and then, but I'm not listening to it every time it comes on. So I gave it a one. Next song is 97 Bonnie and Clyde. I really like 97 Bonnie and Clyde. Um, again, it's catchy. It's abrasive. He's talking about killing his baby mama. It's just, it's a good introduction to Slim Shady and his whole persona on here. And I really like it. Next up is Role Model. I think this song is catchy. Uh, I like the whole Farcorn, Leghorn, Grandma's Porch thing. Uh, that's, I always found that funny. Uh, I gave it a 2. Again, this is classic EM. And now the next couple songs, though. Uh, My Fault is a bit weird. The concept is neat. Uh, I don't know if it's executed at its best. It's a little too zany for my taste. Maybe like some of the songs we'll talk about on Relapse are a bit um, content, light, lyrically great still. Um, so this gives a one. I'll probably listen to it almost to that 50% threshold, but I feel like it's not quite there just because the content Oh, the next song is Come On Everybody. I'm going to say it's the weakest song on the album is Come On Everybody. I really don't like it that much. I gave it a 1 because it's still, you know, his abrasive Slim Shady character. He still says some crazy shit that's, you know, fun to listen to every now and then. But I feel like it is the weakest song on the album. But it still gets a 1. Next is Rock Bottom, one of my favorite Eminem songs. It's meaningful. He's saying some shit. Uh... The rhyme schemes are great. The beat's great. You know, Dr. Dre, I think, did all this album. And this is peak Eminem storytelling, you know, in, in that type of bag. So, I gave Rock Bottom a two. Next is Just Don't Give a Fuck. Obviously, like, a theme song to the whole Slim Shady era. And it's catchy. It's funny. It's zany. But, like, in a good way. Not, like, come on, everybody, my fault way. So, it gets a two. Next is As the World Turns. Um, I can see how people might not like this one. 
I think As the World Turns is funny and, like, not too zany. It, it walks that line between, like, funny and zany that Eminem has, and it stays on the good side of that line for me. And that's why I enjoy it. So I gave it a 2. Next up is I'm Shady. I was between a 2 and a 1 on this. I went with a 1. Um, I don't know. It's just... It's not, like... There's other songs on this album, I think, that does this song better. You know, My Name Is. Probably Just Don't Give a Fuck. I Still Don't Give a Fuck. Songs like that do better than this song does. That, like... The title songs I'm Shady and introducing you to Slim Shady. This better song on the album that does that. So I gave this song a one. Next up is Bad Meets Evil. I've never enjoyed either of the verses on this song. Um and I like Voice to Five Nine. I like Eminem. I like Bad Meets Evil, the group and some of their songs, but this song on Slim Shady LP I've never been a huge fan of. So it's gonna get a one. And finally, still don't give a fuck. Uh, just like, just don't give a fuck, it's like a, how did you opinion, what did you expect, his opinion wasn't going to change in nine minutes, from just don't give a fuck, to still don't give a fuck, so, it's still a great song, still Slim Shady, like, calling card-esque type of song, it's abrasive, it's fun to listen to, I really like it. So out of 28 possible points, the Slim Shady LP gets 23 possible points, giving it an 82, and putting it at 6th place on the list. Now, before we get to this last album that uh, we're going to discuss, I just want to say thank you all for listening so far. And if you've liked what you've heard, comment, like, what else you'd want me to rank, like, subscribe, share, do all that. I really appreciate all the support. Be sure to check out part one. Like I said, it's, you know, linked in the video. So just be sure to check out the cards. Hit the little I at the top right and it should be there. And be sure to check out part three and four. I'm probably going to do uh, spot 4 and 3 next, and then spot 2 and 1 in a different video, just to break it up into listenable-sized chunks. So you guys don't have to listen to be drawn on forever. But without further ado, my fifth favorite Eminem album, and I think the last good album before we get into the great albums, is his newest album, Music To Be Motored By. Which, I don't know, might seem a uh, bit controversial to some but i feel like i don't know i really enjoy it so let's get on into it so the first song is premonition it's a great intro i gave it a two it sets the tone for the album yes it feels a little like kamikaze and if the whole album was like that maybe i would not like it as much but this song sets the mood and really the rest of the album doesn't really feel like kamikaze so in that way it gets a pass but it's a great song eminem's at his peak rapping he's saying some shit i enjoy that next up is Un unaccommodating this almost got a one just called the young ma's verse or ma i don't know how the fuck to say it um i hate it it's so bad uh she should have brought way better performance to an eminem album but it's a minute, and then you get two really great Eminem verses. I like the uh, MGK diss in it. It's funny. So I gave it a two as well. Next up is You Gun Learn with Royce Defy 9. Uh, I gave it a two. It's a great example of what I was saying earlier in the Slim Shady LP about Bad Meets Evil. The group is great, and I like a lot of those songs, and You Gun Learn is perfect for that. Uh, Royce brings this very, um, like calm down flow compared to his normal super lyrical rhyme schemes uh he's still super lyrical in this but he's saying more it's about what he's saying to him in this song and eminem brings some great double entendres and punch lines that are really enjoyable to this one as well next up is those kind of nights i was going between a two and a one for this one and the more i listen to it the less i like it uh, it's gonna stay on the playlist i'm pretty sure but it's, it gets a 1 instead of a 2 because I feel like, I don't know, the, the whole Ohio bit in the beginning that Eminem does, I don't like. Ed Sheeran's chorus is, you know, middle of the road for me. So I'm probably going to uh, skip it at least half the time when it comes up on the playlist. Next up is In Too Deep. I hate this song. This gets a 0. It's one of those relationship songs that Eminem does. That um, I was talking about my part one video. Well, it's just like 
it's time to just stop doing these types of songs, you know. And I, I don't want to listen to it. It gets a zero. Next is Godzilla with Juice World, the late Juice World, rest in peace. I think it works great. I think the beat and the chords that Juice brings, uh, Eminem plays off of a lot. I think the verses are great. The fast verse at the end is weird for me because I normally don't enjoy Eminem's like spazzy fast rapping that much. But Godzilla, like, I don't know, he's gotten better at doing it because you can hear pretty much all he's saying while he's rapping fast. It's just hard to like say it back if you're trying to like rap along but you can understand what he's saying and it's not like a bunch of gibberish bullshit i think like rap god has some gibberish in it like sama lama dama lama that's dumb right um but godzilla you ca he's kind of saying more than that so i can forgive those super fast parts and it gets a two next up is darkness and i gave it a two and while it's hard to listen to it's an impressive storytelling song you know, it's Eminem at a storytelling peak, or the best he's been in a long time at that, at least. And it's an important song, it gives an important message, and the way Eminem pulls it off, I really like. The next song is Leaving Heaven. I think it's the opposite of those kind of nights. I was probably going to start off with giving it a one, but the more I've listened to it, the more I've, like, it's grown on me. And it, it's saved by that last verse a lot, I think. It's why it gets a two instead of one, is that last verse. But... I really, I've, I've grown to enjoy this one more, so it gets a two as well. Next up is Ya Ya, uh, Royce, Black Thought, M, and Danon's on the beat, I'm pretty sure. And Royce gives a short verse, because uh, he is on this album, I think, four times. So it makes sense for Royce to be like, man, I can't keep giving you, you know, these super long, you know, normal size verses. Royce gives a short verse. Which I'm not a huge fan of. Black Thought comes through, dude. Black Thought is awesome on this song. And then Eminem comes in. And Eminem does a great job of, you know, matching Black Thought. And I feel like perhaps Black Thought even made Eminem do better than he would if it was just him and Royce. Because I think Black Thought's performance is so great on this song. And I also like the chorus and the throw that to Buster Rhymes. And you can hear a snippet in Yaya of uh, the song Calm Down with Buster Rhymes and Eminem. Which I really enjoy, so I gave it a 2. Next up is Stepdad. Uh, it's not as bad as In Too Deep, but I also gave Stepdad a 0. Because it has one of those shitty revival sounding hooks, you know. I hate it. Uh, and, and it's a weird song for Eminem to be rapping about at this stage in his life. You know, he's like 47 or some shit. Like, you gotta let that go, man. Uh... And the chorus sucks. If the chorus didn't suck, it might be listenable. But the chorus is so bad on this song. So, it gets a zero. Next up is Marsh. Um, I like Marsh a lot. I like the chorus. Uh, even though, you know, it's kind of a... Not saying much chorus. Uh, I like it. Uh, the verses are cool. It's a funny song, but it's a lyrical song. And he's kind of saying something. So all those parts bring together, give it a 2. Next is Never Love Again. The first time I heard it, I wanted to give it a 0. But then by the end of the song, I realized that it's not a love song for, like, Kim. It's a love song for, like, addiction. And then listen to it again, it makes me like the song, like, a ton more. So I gave it a 2. Uh, especially with that beat flip. If that beat flip doesn't happen, coming into the third verse, I think it would be a 1. But that beat flip and then him changing up his rapping style for that third verse pushes it over to the two territory for me. The next song is Little Engine. Now I've heard people not liking this song, which is strange, I think, because this is a great song on the album, I feel. Uh, the chorus is a little out there, but I really enjoy it. I think it's a catchy song. Eminem's, you know, lyrical, doing his thing, so I don't get it. Uh, I gave it a two. Next is Lock It Up with Anderson Park. This song is great. I think the backstabbing trader Joe Ball is funny. Um, I don't know, it's one of the better songs on the album, honestly, I think. The hook in Anderson Park uh, with his like intro verse thing as well does a great job of, you know, getting a good mood for this song that really enhances it. Next is Farewell, and I heard some people shitting on it, and I could see why you wouldn't like it. It's another relationship song, but at least unlike In Too Deep, Farewell is catchy. 
it's kind of upbeat and catchy and you can kind of like you know sing and rap along to it and it's not like too dwelling of a relationship song you know it's not sulking in it so that's why i enjoy farewell uh, enough to at least give it a one it doesn't get a two but it got a one next up is no regrets i really like this song the hook is soulful this is the type of song that like Eminem should be doing, you know. It's not a Poppy, Rihanna, Sia, whatever other people he's had on hooks. Ed Sheeran type song. It's like a soulful... It, it meshes better with the rapping on the on the song, I think. The hook does. And I gave it a two. And then finally, it's I Will with Slaughterhouse. Except for Joe Budden, Backstabbing, Trader Joe. And uh, I Will's really great. I like all the performances, especially M's. His, like, rebuttal to Lord Jamar in this verse, I think, is very poignant. You know, it's gonna... It answers Lord Jamar's criticism, I think, the best of anything Eminem has rapped about so far. And I gave I Will a 2. So that means out of 34 possible points, uh, Music To Be Murdered By got 28. And that means it got an 82. Which means it got the same score as Slim Shady LP, but since... Music to be motor by had more songs on it, therefore like more chances to fail. I gave it like the boost over Slim Shady LP to put it in fifth instead of sixth place. Because it had thirty four possible points and Slim Shady LP only had twenty eight. So music to be motor by is fifth. So that puts us at tenth place revival is forty seven. Ninth place Encore seventy nine. Eighth place Marshall Mathers LP two with eighty. 7th place Relapse with 81, 6th place Slim Shady LP with 82, and 5th place Music To Be Motor By with 82. So, that's the end of this part 2 video. Part 3 will be covering spots 4 and 3, and then part 4 will be covering spots 2 and 1. So be sure to come back and check those out. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, hit that bell so you can check out, so you can get notified when the next part drops. Uh, I'm going to hope drop it probably Friday. That sounds about right to me. And thanks for watching. And be sure to check out some of my other videos. I haven't done any other music things than this. But if you want to see that, please comment. And I'll be sure to, you know, look into those, doing those for y'all. So thank you for watching. Peace.